Welcome to New South Wales DPI Online with Barry Haskins, Hilston District Agronomist. Today we'll be looking at fertiliser toxicity in lupins and some early trial results from this season from a variety specific agronomy trial based at Mary Wagga in southwest New South Wales. In western New South Wales, lupins are probably the most popular legume break crop. They fix nitrogen and provide a break for leaf and root diseases as well as allowing us to rotate herbicide chemistry. Lupins, and in particular albus or broadleaf lupins, have been well known to be sensitive to large amounts of fertiliser next to the seed. Most of the research looking at fertiliser toxicity was done in the 80s and 90s when cultivation, wider sowing boots and narrower row spacings were all very common. In today's more common farming system, we are tending to utilise less of the set seedbed because we have gone to wider row spacings in conjunction with knife point tines or discs in order to sow through stubble. This has in effect concentrated much more fertiliser with the seed and research is suggesting that this may be an issue with sensitive crops such as lupins. In this picture you can see Rosetta on 25 centimetres with no fertiliser and as you can see we've achieved quite a good plant stand that would be commercially acceptable. As soon as we add fertiliser to exactly the same plot, in this case 60 kilograms per hectare of Superfect, we have really reduced our plants stand to a stage where this would not be commercially acceptable. On 50 centimetre row spacings, which you can see in this picture, um, with no fertiliser, again we've had a pretty good result. Uh, most of our plants have come. Again on 50 centimetre row spacings, you can see um, with fertiliser, we've reduced our plant stand. Um, this is quite a market effect and um, as you'll see in a minute, plant numbers were reduced significantly. In the background you can see where we've taken fertiliser out of the equation. Um, all of the plants have developed quite well. As we widen the row spacing to 75 centimetres, we are concentrating even more of that seed and fertiliser within the plant row. And as you can see on the previous slide, no fertiliser, we've had a very good establishment. As soon as we add fertiliser, we are reducing our plant numbers uh, quite dramatically. Again in the background you can see where most of the um, most of the plants were pretty good where we didn't have. So in this trial at Mary Wagga we had six varieties, three albus lupins or broadleaf lupins and uh, three narrowleaf lupin varieties or angustifolius and across all of the six varieties this is what we had as an average of, um, of plants stand at the various row spacings. A very common occurrence is to have lower plant stands as we widen row spacings at the same seeding rate and as you can see this trial confirms that. The other thing that we can see is that um, the impact of the fertiliser is greater at the wider row spacings. In each of the graphs that you'll see here today a 0 indicates uh, no fertiliser and a 1 indicates 60 kilograms per hectare of a fertiliser called Superfect. When we look at the effect of the individual varieties in this trial, all at 25 centimetres, you can see that the impact of fertiliser has probably had an equal effect on all varieties. So albus lupins and narrow leaf lupins are probably both um, as sensitive if you look at the results from this trial. If we look at the impact of fertiliser on Rosetta specifically, which were in the pictures of the, um, of the video earlier on, you can see that um, Fertiliser has had a, a larger effect as we widen row spacing, which is what we'd expect. But even at 25 centimetres, um, the results were, were quite conclusive. So from this trial, we can see that even low rates of fertiliser can affect the establishment of all lupins uh, and all varieties of lupins in some situations. Whilst there are other trials in recent years that have also shown lupins to be sensitive to fertiliser toxicity, the results from this trial are quite dramatic and we really need to look at this over a number of years and across a larger number of sites. These trial results will be available at the end of the season by contacting your local district agronomist.